Hello and welcome back to Total Extreme Wrestling MCW and we're going to jump straight into Midlands Mayhem because we have no backstage instance for this show. However, we do have a pretty important first segment. So if you're looking forward to that, please do leave a like down below. Comment who's your favourite wrestler on our roster and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can stay up to date. Let's jump into MCW Midlands Mayhem. The first thing that we have to address is Ricky Knight announcing that due to pack disregarding MCW, Rampage Brown will be taking his place in the round robin tournament. Rampage Brown debuting getting a rating of very good for his gimmick. And with that, we are going to replace Pack with Rampage Brown. I will show you the reason for that in just a moment. So the reason for replacing Pack is, as you can see here, for our Friday Week 1 shows, he's booked up with Dragon Gate. For our Friday Week 3 shows, he's booked up with NWE and then Dragon Gate. So he's not going to be around enough for us to be able to make use of him. Also, we'd have to pay for him to come over from Japan. So what I'm thinking is once we've crowned a champion, he can come in and say, well, that was taken from him and get a match for the title, despite the fact of his absence. So that will happen down the line. But for now, let's go and see what Rampage Brown can do in his debut. And he makes his debut by beating Ricky Knight in seven minutes and three seconds. So he literally gets an ounce as a packed replacement, walks out, just absolutely clobbers Ricky Knight, goes straight into their match. He ends up winning by submission, a match rating of 22, an in-ring performance of 35 for Rampage Brown. So looking like a very good person for us to pick up. We did have him set to dominate the match which I just thought would really get help get him over. And it does seem to have helped with that. We then jump straight into our next match, which is Dave Mastiff in a bout that had superb wrestling and a decent reaction from the crowd. Dave Mastiff defeats Pete Dunne with a cannonball. The match getting us 48 ratings, so that's very good for us at this level. Mastiff with an in-ring performance of 52 and Pete Dunne with an in-ring performance of 35. The so two pretty solid results for us there. And very good showing from those two. Following that, we just have a little segment where Soraya is seen saying basically she's going to be the first MCW Women's Champion. Becky comes through, gets in her face and says, you know, don't look past me. You, you're already thinking about being in the final. You've still got to beat me tonight. So that's our main event for the night as well. So Becky, just remind him, Soraya, don't, don't get ahead of yourself. After that, we have Chris Brooks beating Trent Seven in 13.02. It was just a decent match, no other way to describe it apparently. With a fast roll-up, a 25 rated match. So not as good as some of the other matches, but this was intended as a little bit of a cool down before the main event. Chris Brooks and Trent Seven both apparently holding back, which isn't great to see. But oh well, we'll, we'll, we'll move past it, I suppose. Then after the match, Chris Brooks just says he might be an underdog, but that's never stopped him before, obviously. And he's proven that to be the case because so far he's had two wins from two in bracket A at the moment with his win over Zack Knight being the other one. What we're going to have to do now as well is Rampage Brown is going to be in a lot of matches in the next few weeks because he's got a lot to catch up on. And I believe next up we have our main event, Soraya Knight versus Becky James, the winner advancing to the final of the MCW Women's Championship and in a bout that had good wrestling and a decent reaction from the crowd Soraya Knight defeats Becky James in 10 minutes and 20 seconds by submission which means the tournament has now finished with Soraya Knight as the winner Soraya Knight getting a 45 in ring performance Becky with a 23 and the match got a 38 rating overall so pretty good result for us there in the main event. The only real problem we had with this match was due to a bit of stamina for Becky and her going all out. And also because they're both faces. But that's one of them when, you do, when we're doing a round robin tournament and with such a small company. And then after the match, we just have a little segment of Soraya celebrating knowing that she's going to be in that match to crown the first women's champion. So an overall rating of 37 for the show. We'll go around and we'll tell Dave Mastiff he was uh, had a great performance. We'll tell Soraya 
uh, point out as a good example. And Chris Brooks can be given some encouragement. So they're all happy with that. So we also drew 84 fans. I probably should have mentioned that at the show. I'll try and get that into my habit. And we had very positive feedback from the show. So that's always nice to see. And we're back for MCW Live. This time we are again at the Featherstone in Hilton with 88 people for this show. And we opened the show in a bout that had good wrestling and a decent reaction from the crowd. Martin Kirby defeats Zack Sabre Jr. in 7 minutes 37 and gets a match rating of 42, which is fantastic for us to open the show on. Not what I expected from these two, but gets the show off to a strong start. And then we go into our second match, which had great wrestling and a decent reaction from the crowd. Zack Sabre Jr. defeats Trent Seven in 17-23 by submission with a senior stretch. That gets a match rating of 37. Zack Sabre Jr. with a 53, which is fantastic. We did try doing a technical masterclass for this match. But given that it dragged it a bit in the middle and the lack of flow was noticeable, I don't think that was the right decision. Maybe it could work, but not for these two. I think it's more Trent Seven wasn't quite good enough for it in terms of his technical skill. Although... He's probably one of our best other than Zack Sabre Jr. So it was worth a try. And 37, still not a bad match for us by any means. After that, they have a segment where Zack Sabre offers his hand to Trent Seven. Trent contemplates it for a moment and then does shake his hand. He is still going to be a heel, but he's just being a bit more respectful than you'd see in a traditional heel. That gets a rating of 22. I believe now we have another segment it is, it gets an 80 rating, and it's just Soraya coming out, ready to watch the match, which is going to be between Brittany Knight and Jenny Shodin. If this is a draw, or Brittany wins, she advances to the final. However, that doesn't happen. Jenny Shodin defeats Brittany Knight in 12.48 by pinfall after a distraction from Soraya Knight. So what I'm actually setting up here is so the way that that's happened is Soraya tries to help Brittany, but she gets annoyed at her, tells her, you know, leave me to this. I can deal with this myself. Gets rolled up, loses the match, which means bracket B finishes with a free way tie between Brittany and I, Erin Angel and Jenny Shodin. So... Who's going to be facing Soraya Knight for the Women's Championship? We'll have to find out at the next show because that is a very controversial ending and the bracket is basically nullified because we've had a draw. After that, Soraya is trying to apologise to Brittany, but Brittany just turns and walks away from her, not interested in hearing the apology. And then I believe this is our main event, which had good wrestling and a decent reaction from the crowd. Lionheart defeats Clint Majera with a leap of faith. This was, as usual, a hardcore match for Clint Majera. Gets a rating of 39. Lionheart with a 46 and Clint with a 24. So that is our main event. So after the match, we're just going to get Lionheart celebrating. No, we are not because Dave Mastiff has attacked Lionheart again. This time he ends it by hitting a huge splash off the top rope and he is really trying to injure Lionheart's ribs with these constant attacks. And overall the show gets a 38 rating so we're going to go in and say to Martin Kirby, you can be pointed out as a good example. Uh, Jenny Shodin can be complimented on a good performance as can Lionheart. So once again very positive feedback for the show. And we'll have a very quick look at the tournament brackets now. So Zack Sabre Jr. takes a lead in Group A with six points. And in bracket B, there's a three-way tie for first place between Lionheart, Pete Dunne and Dave Mastiff. However, Pete Dunne has had three matches in comparison to Lionheart and Mastiff's two. Meanwhile, in the women's side, as we mentioned, Brittany, Erin Angel and Jenny with a three-way tie all ending on two points. How is that going to be resolved? We'll have to come back next time to see what happens. If you've enjoyed that, please do leave a like down below. Comment what do you think we should do 
to resolve that, I've got something in mind. Subscribe if you're enjoying the content, and thank you very much for watching.